What's up, YouTube? Drew here, and you are in my shop with this 2008 Hyundai Elantra. This information is gonna to apply to this entire generation of Elantra. And what I wanna to talk to you guys about today, two things. So you've got a steering wheel that's kunk, 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 but your tie rods are fine, your steering rack is fine, and your steering shaft, the yoke, the little um, U-joint that's up in there, that's fine too. Uh, what you've got, almost guaranteed, I mean, I bet you anything if you check everything else and that's not it, one of these bushings, um, they look like little stars. Let me show you in better light there. One of these bushings, they exist between the electric motor and the power steering and the steering assembly, the steering column itself. So um, this assumes the basic mechanic ability to do all this work. I'm not showing you the teardown to get to this point, uh, but I will show you that there is a, a 12 there, there's a 12 there, and then way back, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you uh, unfortunately, but way back in there, it should be obvious, is two more 12s, and then you've got four Torx bolts that hold this motor, these two halves together. But there's a computer on top, and that's got a Torx. You could actually see it right where my finger is, covering it, not, covering it, not. But there's three of them. There's two on the other side. On the other side, there's the hinge that makes your, your tilt steering happen. Flip that hinge all the way forward. And by the way, when you drop the steering column, drop it so the steering wheel rests on the driver's seat. With that hinge flapped all the way forward, you could get an extension down and pull that computer out. Um, but here's the deal. So when you get in there, you've got to clean out. This one is going to be literally just oil impregnated rubber dust at this point. Pull that out, clean everything really good. Um, if I remember correctly, the uh, the female side of the brass bushing aims at the motor and the male side goes into the spring. So it goes spring, brass bushing, and then motor. Um, but say you get it all back together, and I've done this multiple times. This is the first time it happened to me. You get it all back together and you get an uh, electronic stability control off warning light and you get a red, I'm gonna show you what the lights look like if I could find the key. You get a red, this guy, electric power steering is what that stands for. By the way, you'll notice green lights are giving you information. Like if I turn on um, cruise control, I guess I don't know how to do it, whatever. Oh, there we go. So cruise, it's just telling you your cruise is on. Yellow is telling you, hey, watch out for this. This could be serious. Red is telling you freaking pull over. This can kill you. So, you know, if your alternator goes, if your door's open, you could fall out. Your oil pressure's gone. Uh, brake, I don't know why that one's not on, but your brakes are bad. Well, EPS, that's a red one. That's like your power steering is failed. Um, you can still manually drive it, by the way, but that that's really serious. So mine was flashing. I searched all over the internet. I'm going to stop right now. If you guys know a way to do this without a scan tool, let me know. But I searched high and low all over the internet. There is no way to do this without a scan tool. And hey guys, please don't be upset at me for delivering the bad news. But I am here to tell you, I own a car dealership. I do the vast majority of my own diagnostics and a lot of my own repair work. We do not have employees. At the time of this filming, our kids are nine years old and under. We're able to move a hundred cars a year as a family. And by that, I mean right now, just me and turn this business off when we need a vacation together. You don't get back your time with your kids and I am working very, very hard to keep the uh, employee side of this business, just me, and move as many cars as possible while doing what is in the best interest of the customer, which is why I buy my cars in the South and they're not all rusty because I get cheap shipping up from the South. Anyways, pardon that tangent. This is the scanner that I have chosen for my shop. And again, now you guys know if you didn't already, this shop is how I feed my wife and four kids. So um, I could not afford a, you know, $2,500 or $5,000 snap-on scanner, but I needed something, you know, bi-directional that's good. My buddy Lee, uh, Lee, if you're watching this, you're the best, um, from Arizona, actually, he recommended this scanner and said you can load it with up to five manufacturer-specific softwares at once. So I bought it. It is the NT510 Elite. If you're watching this, mine was under 150 bucks. Uh, it came preloaded with Toyota. Just buy yours preloaded with Hyundai and problem solved. Um, that's not much more money than it would cost to bring this to a mechanic and pay them 80 or $120 to do this for you. It was very simple. It just told me to put the steering wheel in the ahead position, uh, press the button on the thing, turn the car off, wait 15 seconds, turn it on. My warning lights were gone. No replacing the steering column um, and no bringing in. I avoided all costs bringing in other uh, technicians to do my diagnostic. I do outsource some work to other, you know, to, to shops and individuals 
individuals that do like side work and stuff like that, but only if I know what I'm sending them. Um, I, I own a car dealership and I'm terrified by the idea of sending other people my diagnostic work. If you're a weekend warrior and you're trying to fix your car, hey, my heart's broken for you right now because you're watching this and finding out that you can't fix it until this bad boy arrives in the mail or something like it. But um, it's very important to be able to do as much as you can yourself. And this tool has allowed me to do that. Foxwell does not know who I am. They don't care about me. They don't pay me. I just really like the tool, so I wanted to share with you guys. But that is pretty much all you need to know about how to deal with this issue. And again, I know how much it sucks to try to find a solution that doesn't involve spending more money and waiting more time, but this is the truth. And again, if, if I'm told there's a way to do it uh, without a scan tool, thank you so much. Let me know. I'm going to shout you out in the video that I use to replace this one and show the world. But um, as of now, you know, I have to stick with what I know to be true, and this is the truth. You do need a scan tool, and again, I feel horrible. I know how much that sucks. But if this gave you all the information you need, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There's actually quite a bit about this specific car. Uh, it's a very clean car. It just has some issues that need to be worked out, and this was a big one. So uh, I'm Drew. I really hope you guys like this. God bless you. If I could do it, you could do it. Hang in there. Take care. Bye.